What's going on, everybody? Um, <clears throat> well, the Switch is now one year old. It's official. Um, it launched one year ago. Um, Breath of the Wild is now a year old as well. And the debate over whether Breath of the Wild or Horizon Zero Dawn started. <laughs> um... And I have talked about this on and off um, from a like kind of a weird angle, okay? Some people were like, hey, it's bad voice acting in the Zelda game, which, I mean, I don't like the voice acting in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I turned the Japanese voice acting on. Um, I don't know... Whose idea it was to make Zelda uh, sound English? I, I don't care either. I mean, I just, I really don't care. Um, alongside, I mean, I, I like the game Breath of the Wild, obviously. I've beaten the game on uh, the Switch. I have the Switch version. I have the Wii U version. I bought the Wii U version straight out. Before I bought the Switch version. Um, but. The thing. That. I'm going to point out. And you can check this on Google. If I can find the link to Google. On there. I'll, I'll put it down in the description. But. Um, Zelda has sold I think. A million. Copies more than Horizon. And that's including the Wii U version of the game. Without the Wii U version of the game, I think Horizon is beating Zelda on the Switch by a point. Not by a million more, but by a point. By a point uh, number. Okay, that means they're 7 million apiece, but point something Horizon is beating the Switch. But the Switch alone. That means... With just the Switch numbers, Horizon is beating the Switch. So, had Zelda just came out on the Switch, Horizon would have outsold it. But being it came out on the Wii U as well, and you have people who went, who was like, I'm waiting on this game for the Wii U and Wii U exclusively. They went out and bought it, obviously, because it sold a million plus units. And then you had the Wii U... Uh, not the Wii U, excuse me, the Switch people who bought it exclusively because it was a day one purchase. And because a lot of people think, oh, well, it's the only game to buy for the Switch on day one, even though that is not true. I can sit here and pound that into the ground all day, but people want to believe what they want to believe. They want to believe, oh, the only thing to play on day one was Zelda. No, the only thing that you wanted to play on day one was Zelda. Um... If you do your research, Square Enix released a little game called I Am Sensua. A day one release on the Switch. The same exact day. So this, this game is a year old as well. Um, Fast RMX came out, I believe, day one as well. There were, you know, not many games. I'm not going to say there were a shit ton of games. But no console ever has a shit ton of games. Um, so, just because Legend of Zelda was the big like dog on campus day one doesn't mean it was the only thing to play it just means that it was the biggest title on the market and it literally did exactly what i said in my other video which is overshine everything else now that i've said that do you understand what i was trying to say in my other video with how zelda overshined everything else Zelda came out at the exact same time. Where is my Zelda copy here? Here it is. These two came out at the exact same time. But because this is a more well-known name, this was overshadowed. See what I'm saying? That's exactly what I was saying in my last video that a lot of people just don't seem to understand. It's not that there isn't anything good to play. It's just that there's so many of these on this current gen that these are overshadowed. That's what I'm pointing out. And I'm now just saying in a different way. And I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying. 
now that I'm talking about Nintendo and you're just waiting for me to say something that you disagree with. So let's get down to what I'm trying to say about, um, where is it? I have the game. Okay. So when it comes to Horizon and uh, Breath of the Wild, when it comes to these two games, obviously I have them both. Um, I've beaten Zelda and I haven't beaten this yet. I've only started playing it, which I got to start playing more live of this because that's the only way I've been playing it. Um, I've only gotten a couple of hours into this game. Um, I don't have a negative opinion of the game other than the fact I hate the way they made her run. It's really fucking annoying. She's She acts crazy as hell. Like She does this arm thing where she looks crazy as fuck. That annoys the hell out of me. Um, that aside, the story in the game that I've made so far is, eh, okay. I mean, there's not a whole lot that I can work with because I haven't gotten that far, okay? Um, Breath of the Wild. It's a Zelda game. I see how a lot of people don't like it, but then again, a lot of people who don't like it are used to the games that are out now where... You have someone tell you what to go do, and they have arrows pointing you in the direction to go. Whereas Breath of the Wild kind of doesn't. It it does that for like the tutorial, and once you get off the Great Plateau, you're basically on your own. You can either go over here, or you can go fuck over there, and do whatever the fuck you want to. And I get how that would annoy people. I'm not saying that it didn't annoy me at one or two uh, points, but it is what it is. There's a lot of similarities between Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn. For instance, Horizon Zero Dawn, you have to climb up these uh, giraffe-looking dinosaur uh, ma machines to get more of your map open. In Breath of the Wild, you have to climb up these tall-ass towers to get more of your map open. Very similar. Um, and... I mean, in Horizon, you fall down and do the same rope uh, saving jump every single time. In Breath of the Wild, you do the hang glide thing every single time. There's very similar things that get on nerves of both sides of the fence here. However, people who talk about Horizon being the Zelda killer get on my nerves. And the reason they get on my nerves is not because I'm a huge Nintendo fanatic or that I've been a Zelda fan since back in the early uh, 90s. No. In fact, I've said this several times. My first game that I've ever beaten for Zelda was Twilight Princess because I was like, this is a dark overtone and the graphics look really good. And I had a Wii U. Uh, or not a Wii U, excuse me, but a Wii at the time. And I was like, what is this? Um, I got to play it, and I, I played it, and I fell in love with it, and then I went back and played a, a Link to the Past, and it just, like, rekindled that. So, the first one I ever beat beat was Twilight Princess, because I was, you know, able to get what it was saying versus when I was younger, and A Link to the Past just really didn't do anything for me, and I just didn't really get what was going on. So, that being said... <sighs> What I want a lot of people to understand now is that until Sony comes out with, like, Horizon Zero Dawn 7 or 8, the game can't be a Zelda killer. It just, it can't. Okay, it can be a great game. I'm not taking nothing away from that. Excuse me, it can be a great game. It, it, it can. It can be just as good as Breath of the Wild. And if you want to put this game up against this game and that's it, more power to you. If this is the only way you want to talk about this game in general is Horizon Zero Dawn versus Breath of the Wild, more power to you. We can have this conversation. But as far as Horizon Zero Dawn goes against the entire Zelda franchise, you don't stand a chance. Not because Horizon is a bad game, it's just, do you realize that Zelda has stood the test of time? Like, legitimately stood the test of time. Zelda is like 30 plus years old. 
Ocarina of Time is still talked about today as if it just came out yesterday. A Link to the Past is still talked about as if it just came out yesterday when you just talk about this game. There are games in the franchise that are still talked about as if they just came out. And there are games still played as if they just came out. Horizon has a lot of work to do to make it to that level. No disrespect to this game. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to put perspective in this. Okay? Horizon just is not on that level. Now, if you want to talk about Horizon versus Breath of the Wild, we can talk about that. Yes, the voice acting in Breath of the Wild gets on my nerves, but so does Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Nothing can be said about that. Voice acting gets on a lot of people's nerves, depending on the game. That's just facts. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people just turn it off and turn the subtitle on. That's just the way certain things happen. Alright, I'm not going to sit here and justify it, because in all honesty, some voice acting in this game is annoying. And I said some, not all. Okay. Um, and I just pointed out how some similarities between the two work. So, neither one of them is perfect. Neither one of them are, you know, filled with, you know, being total, you know, up shit's creek. But Horizon is nowhere near the uh, stable that Zelda is. Being that it has been one of the go-to games that Nintendo has. Now, if we get to like a PlayStation 5 and Horizon comes out again. And it's not this Horizon, but a new Horizon. And then we have like say a PS6 and another one comes out. Then we could start talking about how Horizon can be in the same league because Horizon is starting to build towards that. But until then, Horizon is just one game by Guerrilla Games, just like Killzone. That's all that is. See what I'm saying? That, that again, is I'm not taking nothing away from it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not taking nothing away from it. Um, I've already praised it for selling over 7 million copies, for beating the version that was on the Switch of the uh, Breath of the Wild game. But I'm pointing out exactly why Horizon just isn't that Zelda killer. It's one game. One game going up against 30 years of legacy here. It just doesn't happen that way, okay? It's like Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot was supposed to be the Sonic and Mario uh, clash. And what happened with that was there were, what, three Crash Bandicoot games? And then Naughty Dog and PlayStation were like, fuck it. And just left it. Now we have the Insane Trilogy, but unfortunately the Insane Trilogy is the same three games from PlayStation. The original PlayStation. It's not Crash 4. It's not a new IP. It's just the first three. Had they come out with Crash 4, and then we got Crash going and, and going and going, then yes, Crash could again go after being the Mario and Sonic and competing like that. But unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. And people get mad at that because I'm saying this type of shit. They're like, oh, that's not at all true. Uh, and I'm like, you have to put it in that perspective. It's just the way things work. Because how in the hell is Crash going to be Mario Killer if Mario has had countless games? He's now Mario Odyssey, but he's had Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3... Super Mario World, which you have Mario Galaxy 1, Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Sunshine, Mario Odyssey. You got countless Mario games out there. Mario 64. You got three Crash Bandicoot games. How can that stand against it? See what I'm saying? That's the same thing, okay? Just like 
Um, I don't know. Anything else. It's the same thing. You just can't do it. You see what I'm saying? Just can't do it. You have to put these things in that kind of perspective. All right? I know that pisses people off because they get so uh, revved up and they want to be just all in your face and ah, fanboyism. But truth of the matter is a lot of these games carry weight in years over new IP. And just because you're super excited about that IP doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. See what I'm saying? It's like saying Destiny is Halo Killer. Destiny is only at Destiny 2. Halo's on its fifth game, gonna probably be sixth here in a couple years. Mm, I gotta disagree with you on that one. See what I'm saying? And to answer a bunch of people's questions who keep asking me why I don't talk about Nintendo Switch ports, very easy. It's very tricky to talk about Nintendo Switch ports because Nintendo is just now getting these games that you would consider a port. Name one Nintendo system that Skyrim was on. And remember, you can't mention the Switch. You have to bring up past generations. Name one generation L.A. Noir was on. Go ahead. Can't do it. I know you want to bring up the first part of that piece. I know. I know. Because that's your defense. You want to bring up Mario Kart 8. You want to bring up Pokemon Tournament. You want to bring up um, Bayonetta or Resident Evil Revelations 1. But here's the thing. When I talk about PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and the ports they have, they're not just bringing over their first parties. They're not bringing over you know, God of War 3 or Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 or for Xbox, it's the Master Chief Collection. They're not just bringing those. They're bringing... You've got Dishonored 1. You've got... What else? Um, now you've got Dark Souls. Call of Duty Ghost. You've got... The fuck was the name of that one game? Um... Um, oh, for fuck's sakes. Bioshock. Um, they're coming out with Devil May Cry now. Okay? Third-party games that were on last gen. Um, Assassin's Creed, the Enzo Trilogy. Assassin's Creed 4. Okay? All those games. All those games. Ports. Third-party that were major on last gen, but they're coming to this gen... For no real reason. Batman Arkham, uh, Return to Arkham is a port. And it's Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. It's a port. I bought it, but it, I mean, it's a port. And the only reason I bought it was so I could have every Batman game on the fucking Xbox. But again, it's a port. Grand Theft Auto V is a port from the 3 and the 360. Okay, do you not see how many ports of games that these consoles had? on last generation that have floated over to this generation that you can literally list off that were on the 360 and PS3. Now go through the Switch's library minus those first party games. How many of those games can you honestly say were on the Wii U or even Wii? It's not that many. Resident Evil Revelations, the first one I'll give you. I'll give you that because, yes, it started out on a 3DS, then that game became Capcom's new Resident Evil 4, going to the Wii U, PS3, 360, PS4, Xbox One, went to everything. However, Resident Evil Revelations 2, what system was that on for Nintendo? Remember, you can't bring Switch into it because you're talking about Switch having the ports. So what Nintendo platform was Resident Evil Revelations on? the second version of that game. What what system? That's right. There wasn't one. So it's in a very particular situation here. Where, yes, these games are technically ports, but they're Nintendo's first time having them. Which is why I don't talk about it. Because if Nintendo's never seen these games and all you've ever played was Nintendo, then this is the first time you're getting to play these games. Unlike on Xbox or PlayStation, 
you're buying the same shit for if not the second, then the third, or possibly even the fourth fucking time. Um, Resident Evil's Final Fantasy X-10-10-2, anybody? I'm just saying there are there are special cases, and Nintendo Switch is one of those. I know that pisses you off, and I know you're super mad about that, because you're not talking about the ports on Nintendo. Calm, just, just, you're, you're way up here. I need you to come down here just a little bit, because I need you to understand, and I don't see how this passes everybody. Nintendo with the Wii U didn't get that much third-party support. A lot of the games that are coming over to the Wii, or from the Wii U to the Switch, a lot of those ports that people are bringing up are Mario Kart 8, Pokemon Tournament, DX, are first-party games. They're legitimate first-party titles. A lot of the ports that I'm mentioning for PS4 and the Xbox One are not first-party. Dishonored is not on a PS4 exclusive. It's not Xbox One exclusive. Bioshock is not an exclusive. Those games are not exclusive that I'm talking about. I can bring up Uncharted. I can bring up God of War 3. But, I mean, a lot of these games that are being ported are not exclusive. Zenzo Trilogy is not exclusive. Assassin's Creed 4 is not exclusive. See what I'm saying? A lot of the ports found on the PS1 and the Xbox One, they're not exclusive. They're big third-party titles. So before you go and, like, completely lose your shit because, oh, you're not talking about the Switch, just take two seconds out and go, was Skyrim ever on the Wii U? Was L.A. Noir on the Wii U? When was the, what was the last Rockstar game that showed up on a fucking Nintendo platform? Oh, that's right, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars on Nintendo DS. Fuck. See what I'm saying? L.A. Noir, PS3, and 360. But it's on the PS4 and the Xbox One now. Yes, it's on the Switch. But it was never on the Wii U. Skyrim was never on the Wii U. It was on the PS3, the computer, and the 360. But it was never on the Wii U. See what I'm saying? So, I need you to understand that. And I need you to calm down just a second. Just, just a little bit. Not much. Just, just a little bit. So, just because I'm not bringing up the Switch, it's because I understand. Yes, the Switch has a lot of ports, but they're mainly first-party ports. Bayonetta 2. It came from the Wii U. Anybody else have that game? No. So, they're bringing over their first-party IPs from the Wii U because 13 million Wii U's were sold, so maybe more Switch owners, considering the Switch outsold sold the Wii U, will buy Bayonetta 2 now. I'm not necessarily mad at that. I'm pissed about Xbox One and PS4 doing this shady shit where the PS3 is still over 80 million units sold thinking they need to bring over a bunch of games from a system that is legitimately sold more than their current gen and saying that it's justifiable. See what I'm saying? Chances are everybody's already fucking played them and they want to charge full retail for them games. Huge difference. Huge difference. And again, a lot of those games are big third-party games. They're not even first-party games the majority of the time. And the same is said about the Xbox One. It's not that they're bringing over Lost Odyssey or Infinite of Undiscovery or, you know, anything like that that was just only on Xbox. You know, The Last Remnant or shit like that. They're not bringing those games over and saying here's more enhanced features of the game. And now it's a better version of the game. That's not what they're doing. They're just bringing over the bullshit that you bought, majorly bought into last generation. Dishonored, everybody bought Dishonored last generation. Now they're selling it on the PS4 and the Xbox One. And what it has to do with is that the PS4 doesn't have backwards compatibility. I don't think this generation would be seeing that many ports if PS4 would have went for the backwards compatibility. You can say that's a conspiracy all you want to, but just look at how littered it is. Anyway, 
pardon me, I'm going to get the hell out of here. This video is going on for a really long time. I just want to say happy one year anniversary to the Switch. It has some really bad games. Um, WWE 2K18. Uh, fuck 2K. Uh, fuck EA for their FIFA game. Uh, Ryan doing that dirty shit. Um, but they had a lot of great games as well. And at least everybody was man enough to go and call out the developers for the shady shit they were doing on the Switch. It's glad to s I'm, I'm happy to see that people are now starting to blame the developers for the shit they can actually do and release. Versus, oh, it's, you know, Xbox or PlayStation's fault or Nintendo's fault for the game being the way that it is. I'm happy to see that's becoming a thing. Although it took the Switch to be an item for that to happen. But either way... Um, I'm out of here. Deuces.